You know the last two shots of the trailer of PS1 where you see Ashwara Rai looking longingly at something and then you see the royal throne. After watching PS1, it feels like Ashwara Rai is just a metaphor for Mani Ratnam and the throne is his legacy in the world of Tamil cinema and beyond. And I think it's safe to say that in a way, Mani Ratnam has reclaimed that throne. If you're looking for a review of the film, I assure you this is not a review. This is more on the lines of the confessions of a Mani Ratnam fanboy. And it's actually just my thoughts after watching PS1 in the context of his career and what it really means to me. So I grew up in the 90s, which was the peak of Mani Ratnam's films. But this was a time when I didn't even know who Mani Ratnam was. I just knew that he was this big director because of my parents or uh, the elders around me, whatever they told me. Anjali released before I was born. I was a baby when I watched Talapati. I watched Roja and Bombay in the theater, but I hardly remember them. What I do remember is watching Iruvar in the theater. But at that time, it was far beyond my understanding. He made path-breaking films, went Pan-India, before the term Pan-India even existed, introduced God's own child, A.R. Rahman, to this industry and to this world. And my childhood was mostly shaped by these Mani Ratnam A.R. Rahman soundtracks, which my brother used to constantly play on cassettes over and over again. When I watched Alai Payude for the first time, I was around 10 years old and I loved the songs, but I had no idea why my elder cousins liked it so much. Then Kannatil Muthamital came out and uh, I think that was the first Mani Ratnam film that I actually understood. I felt something poking in my heart. And then I there the game and it just broke all of that understanding because the first time I watched it, I couldn't wrap my head around the non-linear narrative. I didn't even know what non-linear narrative was that time. Guru, I felt was okay, nothing much to complain. So until this point, there were a few Maniratnam films that I liked, but I didn't know his legacy. I didn't know the impact he had. I didn't know why he was a household name. I just knew that he was famous. But in 2008, this was the year when I started going to college. My friend and I used to come back home after college and uh, used to watch all the movies that I used to download that time. And for some reason, on a random afternoon, we played this Kamal Asan movie from 1987 called Nayagan. Director Vetri Maran, who's said many, many times on stage in interviews that he's watched Nayagan more than 47 times. I think I've broken his record. And that's when it hit me. It took me 18 years to understand who Mani Ratnam really is and what his films really mean. After that, I revisited every single Mani Ratnam film that I either misunderstood or I missed out on. When I watched Maunaragam, it shocked me to see how he made such a progressive film back in the 80s with a leading woman. Talabadi made me respect him so much more because he was one of the first people to show a superstar like Rajni in a completely new light. It was Iruvar that made me an Agmark fanboy and convinced me that it's his best work ever. While Alay Payade truly embraced me, made me aspire to be this young adult in the early 2000s. And today, it's my favorite, it's my personal favorite film after Nayagan. Since college, I became this true blue Mani Ratnam fan, even though some of his ambitious projects like Ravan or Ravanan didn't really hit the mark. But then Kadal came out and it made me question what happened? He then kind of redeemed it with OK Kanmani, which was a film that I really liked. And then came Carter Velayde again, a film that I really wanted to like, but the world around me convinced me that I didn't and shouldn't like that film. The last decade has been entirely about people just saying that his best work is behind him, that he's lost his form. And with social media really exploding in the last few years, there are people just waiting to shit on you just because you like this man's movies, even the good ones. And I don't know why I was trying to fit in. It was my mistake that I listened to them and people really convinced me that his time is over. And when I started thinking about it, I went into this loop of wondering, does every creative professional or every artist have a peak? I'm not comparing myself to Mani Ratnam or anything, just FYI, but just as a creative person, you start wondering if your best work is behind you. You start losing motivation in starting new things. You develop a fear towards starting new projects, thinking that you're anyways going to fail. So what's the point? And then at 6 a.m. today, I watched Pony and Selvan. And the only thing that I can say is form is temporary, class is forever. More than anything else, I'm just so happy as a Mani Ratnam fan. He's had this dream of making Ponyan Selvan since so many decades. And even despite failures, even despite the self-doubt that comes out of failures, even despite constant criticism that people are telling you that your time is over, you're done. He just worked beyond the noise. He worked beyond all that uh, self-doubt and made his dream project 
come true which is a lesson to me and anyone else who has a dream that they want to make come true or have goals in their life that they're too scared to approach he's been trying to make it since 1994 he's failed twice while trying to start it and finally he found a way to make it the way he wanted to make it on the epic scale that it deserves to be made on and he made it without compromise without giving into this temptation of making it a mass or masala film knowing that such films have succeeded and to see audiences embracing the film getting on this epic journey that ps1 is traveling with these characters who want to take us in so many different directions performed by some of our best actors who are in top form as an audience you feel like you're in the middle of a renaissance painting because of the way it's shot being just hooked to the drama to the politics to this epic story and just witnessing probably tamil cinema's grandest film ever my heart is full as a maniratnam fan the only mistake i made as an audience member while watching the film was even though i was extremely engaged and i was marveling at the scale of the film i was somewhere deep down wishing that it had more mass moments or masala moments like bahubali or triple r or kgf all these films that constantly give you this kick in the gut every 10 or 15 minutes and i think that's a natural tendency of an audience member because maybe because of the dullness and the frustration of the pandemic that we've all been through maybe because instagram reels and shorts have just continuously been decreasing our attention span but the more and more i think about it i think i was wrong to compare it to these other big budget films because i guess not every film needs to be treated the same way ponin selvan is this epic beast of its own it's not a fire breathing dragon from game of thrones that destroys cities but it's more like an elephant massive powerful graceful and loyal and this is just part 1 if you've not watched the film yet don't read anything about the film don't watch any reviews try not to compare it to other big budget films i know it's a very difficult thing to do but just try it just go and experience it for what it is and then form your opinions if you have watched the film already let me know your thoughts in the comments but for now thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video